A few months back, Sweetwater sent me the new Line 6 Pod Express to make a video with. Now I've got a link in the description for that initial video, but now that I've owned it for a little while and have really had a chance to put it through its paces, I'm going to give you my honest assessment on what I think about it. So my initial thoughts once I opened the box was, oh, it's in a plastic housing. I don't know how I feel about a plastic housing, because what if somebody were to drop it, then it's going to break. Not that I'm prone to dropping a lot of stuff, but you never know, accidents happen. So I said, you know what, let's plug it in, let's see what it sounds like. And boy, was I surprised at the tones that were coming out of this thing. I've actually enjoyed using the pedal so much that I've often recommended it to private students as well as anybody who's looking for a multi-effects pedal that is budget-friendly and takes up very little space. Today, let's talk about the pros and cons that I've discovered with the Pod Express. Now, I always like the idea of a multi-effects pedal. I've been using multi-effects pedals for the last 25 years. Nothing wrong with individual pedals. I use a lot of individual pedals now, but early on when I didn't have as much money to buy a bunch of individual pedals, multi-effects units were the way to go for me, especially the ones made by Boss or Digitech back in the late 1990s. So with that being said, the Pod Express is really cool because it's so small. It could fit on, it could fit in your guitar case. Uh, it can go on anybody's pedal board if you want just to add an, an additional uh, group of effects that you wouldn't normally have the money to go out and buy individually. First, the pros of the Pod Express. Now, the Pod Express features HX quality tones which are derived from Line 6's acclaimed Helix family of effects processors. So whether you're using it as your main rig into an amp or you're recording into your DAW, the Pod Express sounds really good. Now the seven different amp and cabinet simulations can be customized and you can put any cabinet to any amp model, giving you even further control over creating unique sounds. Pod Express also got a looper built in, which has a really cool 60 second mono loop time as well as a 30 second stereo loop time. It's got a built in tuner. Now, another great feature with the Pod Express is its ability to travel light. I recently went out of town for a few days and I took a guitar with me as well as the Pod Express. With its built-in volume control, headphone jack, and the ability to run off DC-powered batteries, it really came in handy for me being able to at least get a little practice time in when I was stuck in the hotel room. Now for recording into a DAW such as Pro Tools or Logic or anything else like that, I've been using the Pod Express a lot for going straight into the interface. Now don't get me wrong, I love a great mic amp and cabinet for recording, but when I'm trying to jot ideas down quick or I want a variety of sounds that maybe I don't have a pedal for or a certain effect, the Pod Express is right there ready to go and it sure makes it quick and easy. So lately it's been the go-to choice for me for recording into my dog. Now let's say you don't have an interface. That's no problem because the Pod Express actually acts as an interface with the USB-C port into your computer. When you open up your DAW, your DAW will recognize that that is the interface. So what if you don't already have a dedicated DAW to record with? You can download Audacity for free. You can even get free trials such as Logic Pro and things like that to try them out to see how you like it before you start spending a lot of money on recording. Now for the cons. Honestly, I only have three things that I disliked about the Pod Express. Um, the first is a plastic housing, you know, but for under $180, you really, you really can't bitch too much about that because that's, that's still a great price, 
even if it is in a plastic housing. Um, the fact though that it uses three AA batteries kind of threw me a curveball because most pedals obviously are gonna run off a of nine volt, right? So the three AA's, yeah, I'm not sure why they chose that, but it works, so we'll go with it. I tend to use a wall uh, supply, like a wall power supply for this most of the time. And even when I traveled with it uh, last week in the hotel room, I still just plugged it into the wall. That way I didn't have to worry about batteries. Now, the final con that I found with it is programming it sometimes can be a little cumbersome because to get into some of the secondary menus, you have to hold down the Alt button. And if you're not careful, you might find that you're accidentally not adjusting the parameter that you're looking to adjust. So as an example, you've got the different four different types of distortion on this knob here. But in the sub menu, if holding down Alt, you've got the gain on any one of those. So if you're trying to adjust the gain and you're not fully pushing that Alt button down, you might find you're just changing the distortion model instead. So you gotta kind of be careful of that. Other than that though, that's my only complaints with the Pod Express. Now I've put my affiliate link in the description below from Sweetwater for the Pod Express. If you're thinking about getting one, please use that link. Doing so helps keep this channel running and keeps providing more and more videos for you guys to check out. Let me know what you thought about the Pod Express in the comments down below. Now check it out. Only about 35% of you guys that are watching, liking, and commenting on my videos are actually subscribing to Joe Hansen Guitar. So hit that subscribe button for me. Till next time, keep rocking on.